I made some double tenon joint shelving brackets like this and I made an extra one so I could test it to failure which is what I want to do in this video but I thought I'd also compare it to just using screws because that's what John Heist likes to do for shelf brackets so I made this one and it's joined with two screws at the top and there's even washers behind the screw heads because screw heads pulling through is a major source of failure and uh, with these really long screws, uh, these might hold quite well. I wouldn't be surprised if they held up as well as these ones. And I need to clamp these shelf brackets to something or other, and I figure this column here is actually the best place to clamp them to. It's, I just have to move that workbench out of the way. That should hold well enough. And I put plywood behind it to make for a better YouTube thumbnail. Well, of course, that was to be expected. I don't want to add any more weight, but I figure I'll just extend it to add more leverage. I think I just lost a little bit of nerve there. Okay, let's see how far I'll get before it breaks. Uh-oh, I can still balance from right here, but it's about to go. I'll go a little bit further, balance, there. My foot was right about here, 90 centimeters from the uh, shelf bracket, and it broke tenants pulling out. I thought it might be that the wood would rip, but it's the tenants that pulled out. Let's try the screwed version. So I was pretty confident it would hold this far. No problem. No problem. No problem. Uh oh. So not bad. And screws fail much more gradually. This is pretty good. Uh, there. So that was right here. That's 75 centimeters from the uh, bracket. So let's have a look at how these failed. Tenon pulling out there. Okay, so to some extent the wood did break on the bottom part. And oh, I had really crooked grain on here, which probably made this one fail earlier than it could have failed. Yeah, that's an unfortunate choice there of a piece of wood there. Too crooked a bunch of grain in the tenons. And uh, two by fours like that, they vary quite a lot in density. So I suspect with a more dense two by four with straight grain, this could have easily been one and a half times stronger than it was. And this is the uh, screwed one, which the failure of this one was about 80% the strength of this one. So this is actually a pretty good method of joining these. Uh, certainly with the screws in here, this would have easily held my weight right there because I was able to go quite a bit beyond there. So for the shelves I made, just two big four inch screws would be quite adequate. And the way it failed is uh, these screws did start to pull in here even though I put a washer behind the head. So that's a very important aspect there is to put a washer behind the head, maybe an even bigger washer. And uh, look at that, the wood broke right there. So uh, that started to break the wood. And the way I put the screws in was actually not even in the optimal position because the way I angled them down, they should have really come up a little bit further up there. So this could also be easily 20% stronger. Yeah, so part of it is the wood just sort of split open. This is probably not an ideal piece of wood either. But uh, putting that together was pretty hard. Uh, no less work than uh, this version, except I didn't have to do very much setup. 
And I actually kind of stripped the screw heads on here when I screwed these in because it was so much torque on them. And I'm kind of curious, how well would pocket holes do for this? So I'm just reusing the same piece of wood that I had for my double tenon to make a pocket hole joint. Whoops. That screwdriver is starting to come out on me and uh, since I'm already using pocket holes, I might as well use a Thewalt impact driver. The impact driver is good that way because it hammers the uh, bit back into the screw as it goes. Ow! Shit! Still came out. I thought using pocket holes would be easier than that. Damn it! I just screwed it to my table saw! Ugh. I'm not gonna back up the screws a little bit because I don't want to rip too much of a hole in there. I hate pocket holes. And now the pocket hole test. Okay, here goes this one. Testing how strong this is. Let's go a little bit further. Bang! 60 centimeters! Yes, I wanted it to break. Why? Because I wanted to see how strong it is. So the failure mode of this one was not the pocket holes failing, but the actual screws pulling out of the wood. Yeah, that just pulled uh, this right out of there. And what did this one in is that uh, the uh, pocket hole screws that I put in there just ended up too close together because they're at an angle so they're only grabbing a small wedge of wood and uh, that wedge just pulled out. I guess if I could put these in at an uh, angle more like this but uh, that would be quite a challenge because then I'd need a different kind of jig and an even longer drill. I also uh, put the jig back here a little bit like that so that I have more wood for those to grab around but of course that meant that the screws ended up being maybe a millimeter closer together than they needed to be. So if I uh, set the jig here instead of here, that would have helped the strength a bit. So that was actually kind of impressive showing for the pocket holes. It was more than half the strength of the uh, double mortise and tenon. And it would have been strong enough for the shelves to climb on like I did to demonstrate them. But I still don't like pocket holes.